Hey guys, welcome back to the 1v1 podcast. I am your host, Vladis, and today I usually say I have a very special guest, but this guest is actually a little bit more special to me. And there's a reasoning why. So when I started my journey doing what I'm doing, the whole YouTube thing, um, the Golden Feather was the very first person to reach out to me and to start a, start a dialogue with the Ashes community. And not only that, they brought me on their platform, embraced me with open arms. We had a great discussion of Ashes of Creation. And I went from, I think it was like seven subs to like almost like 20 something by the time I was done uh, with the podcast. And I remember my wife being so excited and just, you know, it, it was so awesome for me. And, you know, ever since then, we've we've kept an open dialogue. I've came back to the tavern to talk more Ashes stuff. Um so yeah, it was only a no-brainer for me personally to bring you guys onto the 1v1 podcast. So you're going to be double team on me. So it's a 1v2 <laughs> technically, but yes. the golden feather, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having well, us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we've we had a blast every time you came on the, came on the, the golden feather with us. So absolutely, like you said, it was a no-brainer. We kind of had to pop over here. And, um, <laughs> by the way... I'm sure you noticed we have different faces than you <laughs> I know. Um, I, I was definitely going to say something, but I wanted to wait a little <laughs> bit. But hey, so what? Because here's the thing. I've seen VTubers start popping up and really doing crazy numbers on Twitch. I mean, heck, even on YouTube. I mean, just people going in. I mean, like what, what made y'all decide to go the VTuber route? Uh, so it's actually, I think I started it basically. Um. <laughs> I was, I like hanging out on art for Twitch because when I work, mm -hmm. I like to watch artists work. It feels like um, we're being productive together. And I saw someone saying that they're doing artwork for tavern artwork. And I was like, oh, what's that? I pop in and uh, they're actually, their name is Honey Goblin. And they were talking about drawing like their mods and stuff. And they referred to their channel as like the tavern. And, uh, and of course, our stuff has been tavern themed since the beginning. So I thought that they were drawing like tavern themed stuff, but uh, it was really cool. I thought it was really unique. They were uh, literally a goblin and it was really cool. Um, and it made me want to try it. So I went out and I tried it and I made a separate account just to privately try it out, see how I liked it. Um, I actually, this character here, her name is Aurelia. She's based off of my D&D character. And my D and D is a druid. As soon as Pyre came out, I was like, "Yep, gotta be Pyre. It fits Relia perfectly." And uh, yeah, Vertec really wanted to be Vex, so I'll let Vertec talk about the Vex side and why he decided to join me. <laughs> Dude, Vertec, you look freaking cool. Like I seen a uh, of um. Oh my god, y'all just set the race, and I just completely Vec. Vec. Jesus Vec. Christ, oh, yeah. Vec. Yes, I, to see them clothed, like it looks like he looks like a barkeep. And of course, the tavern, hello, of course he'd be a barkeep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it looks so good. Like the, whoever designed y'all's stuff, top notch. Like I, I dig it a lot. It looks really great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, we found a, we found a favorite because we had uh, kind of some trial and error with some other artists. And we, we stumbled across this guy on the... Uh, was it Fiverr? It's, uh, Fiverr. Fiverr we went with, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, Max Asada. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Does some great work. He does the entire thing. Normally, there's you have to find an artist, and then you have to find someone to rig it and bind everything so you can right. talk, and it'll make the face move and do funny faces. Like, mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. But uh, <laughs> we found one guy that would kind of do all the stuff all at once and super wow. cooperative, super helpful. Yeah. And seeing her get a character made i said you know what i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it okay wow <laughs> sign and me up sign me up I'm i in. saw uh, so on tiktok um i saw a girl doing um the vtuber stuff on her phone and from her mm -hmm. phone it's connected mm -hmm. to her computer is that how y'all doing it or is it like through another means because there's yeah, like an app much. you download it or whatever and again this is all through like a 15 second like tiktok video <laughs> or whatever but i thought it was really interesting that there's actually like vtuber apps where you can create your avatar kind of thing and then it creates the green screen so you just go on put yourself on whatever background you want and then boom like it's done like i thought that was really cool yeah uh 
Well, actually, so originally it's, we, we use something called VTube Studio. And um, that's kind of, you can use a webcam, a DSLR, which is what we have initially, or an iPhone preferably because uh, we've, we've done a lot of trial and research and iPhones are really good at the AR thing. That's why they did the face uh, recognition unlock. Right. And um, because of that uh, software and that, that type of thing, it's easier to track what exactly you're doing. So I can like puff out my cheeks. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, that's something that is primarily iOS only. And um, actually, Vertec found out about the VBridger stuff, which is what we're using right now, which is why it's able to puff out my cheeks like that. Wow. <laughs> well, that's that's just interesting. Like, again, like it's just I feel like the VTuber stuff is only going to get more popular and more traction. So, you know, I feel like if I could compare VTuber to like Bitcoin, you guys are still in like 2013, 2014. So you got in early <laughs> is what I'm saying. So, I mean, once VTuber gets like really nuts and like, you're going to see like a lot, they're probably going to create a whole thing on Twitch is I don't, if they have one already created, I don't know if there's like a VTuber section, but if there isn't there's one, a category or like a tag, you tag yourself with VTuber. Um, mm, it's, okay. it's been around for at least a year or two at this point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, again, especially before ashes comes out, that's, yeah, Y'all are smart. Y'all are very smart. <laughs> yeah. So we excited. Wanted to get in on the on the races, but uh, the reason I even brought up the 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 avatar thing here, the VTuber thing, is because um, if you see us smiling, we both currently look somewhat angry with these these characters. We haven't fully <laughs> tuned them. There's like so many things you have to do to make this match up with your face and do it really perfectly. Right. But especially with Chibis, if she doesn't open her eyebrows, like push her eyebrows up a little bit, she looks so angry <laughs> when she smiles. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I'm I sure, have a tiny face. So, I'm sure there's like a lot of rigging and a lot of, I'm very sure that that's the case because again, it's gotten so sophisticated and everything. I, I was literally playing with a chat GPT like a couple of days ago because I haven't really got in there. And I just, you know, um, Richie made a video uh recently saying that he he made a script using chat gpt and i was like yeah. let me go and see what this chat gpt thing is all about it's nuts <laughs> like i really do feel like this year for 2023 is going to be the year of ai i think there's going to be more programs uh throughout this year that are going to start coming up that are going to really blow what's currently out like out of the water like it's gonna yeah. it's gonna get crazy um but moving on from all that stuff let's let's talk <laughs> mmos let's talk game design let's talk ashes of creation so yes with 2022 we saw some of the best live streams in my opinion that we've ever seen before i mean uh system after major system we talk about seasons character creator you know we finally saw the updated combat for melee range healing and then we're going to see tanking this month um how were you guys like um how are you guys feeling like around the December time frame and just kind of reflecting of like the year we've had for Ashes of Creation? Hmm. Well, I for one was really, really proud of Intrepid because um, if you remember, they only moved to Unreal Engine 5 in like January or by the time they hit January, they finished moving over. Right. So there was uh, possibly a lot of work that they had to do re with reworking systems and stuff on the back end. But then all of the progress that we saw last year was just amazing to watch. Um, and that's coming from a software engineer's perspective. So whenever you have a major update like that, a lot of stuff can change. Oh, absolutely. And Vertec, what did you, how did you feel about the way this year passed by for Ashes of Creation? So you know what's funny is whenever somebody asks that, every single time i have to think back and say wait at what point in the avalanche of stuff did this year occur <laughs> because it was right. there were there were some there were some things last year but there were little things here and there and there were some big whatevers and then there was you know ue5 and then there was just dead silence for a while and then it was just an avalanche of just so many things right and it seemed to have accelerated kind of like they said it would that mm -hmm. um going to ue5 was going to accelerate the the ability and uh timelines and just opportunities for people in the studio to actually work with each other and work on the same stuff so things could get done quicker and just so many things coming out by the time december came around and everybody i mean 
seriously everybody was like they they're totally going to be announcing alpha they're totally going to be announcing alpha it's going to be a christmas present they're going to be announcing alpha i was one of them <laughs> yeah <laughs> and yeah i think everybody was either either thinking it was going to happen or hoping it could happen like seeing it realistically but at the same time as i may or may not have been in one of those camps <clears throat> i um still thought to myself before this the the live stream came up you know what even if they don't i'm still happy with the year oh absolutely mm -hmm. I mean, everything that's come out and everything that they did like it was a lot of stuff it was a yeah. it was a banger year i mean at the end of the day like we all just want a great product and i you know i don't want to really um harp too much on this but because i've said it in the past like two episodes um i set my own self up for failure believing in something that was my own belief you know what i mean so when they didn't deliver there's no reason for me to get upset at intrepid it was me who hyped up the december live stream thinking they were going to announce something they never said they were going to announce and so looking forward you know i've been trying to realistically look at what's left like what's on the table currently what are things that we have literally seen zero gameplay on and there's quite a few systems that they have not even shown us that are in my opinion very significant major uh, systems and there are some camps that say, well, they're not going to show everything before they um, give Alpha 2 because there's some things that you can't really explain or talk about. They, you got to just play it to understand it. And I do agree. But if we were to talk about, like, let's say land masses or just areas like the Riverlands, we've been seeing the Riverlands throughout this year. I think the Riverlands look fantastic. Mm -hmm. But realistically, we've only seen two areas by it large three because in this recent cleric video we saw kind of the outskirts of the riverlands going into another area but still was the riverlands mm -hmm. and then we saw the snowy capped area in the unreal engine 5 reveal yeah we've seen the desert biome but only in a trailer not in game yet um which even by the trailer standards looked kind of barren like you can clearly see that there was still work to be done which of course it's alpha if yeah. we were to also think that during the Alpha 2, we're going to get half of both continents to play the Alpha on, we still have like over 10 areas that we haven't seen anything on. You know what I mean? And and I do agree with Unreal Engine 5. I'm sure they are working very hard at those areas and everything. But I have a video that I'm, I've been working on where I don't think Alpha 2 is coming even this year in 2023. Hmm. And it's not saying uh, at a negative connotation. I'm not trying to right. spin it as a ne negative connotation. But again, realistically, and, and Stephen has said this, many people have said it, it takes a long, long time to make a basic MMO. And by basic meaning like, okay, we're going to have dungeons, raids, you know, eight classes, you know, some talent systems, professions, uh, PVP, and it's going to be, you know, PVE, PVP servers, you know, and that's that. We're not going to have naval. There's not, it's like, it's just like a basic MMO. And that could take seven, eight, seven to eight years probably to make. Um, We are about to enter its seventh year for Ashes of Creation, right? So they started in 2017. It's going, it is 2023 now. Um, right. There's still, and this is not... <laughs> your basic MMO. If you were to classify as the creation, it's probably the most ambitious MMO that's probably ever been attempted. And so like, again, looking at realistically and also looking at the player base too, where everyone says, take your time. I've seen so many comments on videos where they say Intrepid, just take your time. It'll release when it's supposed to release. But yet everybody is so antsy for Alpha 2. <laughs> and I was one of them. <laughs> I, I'm still one of them. If they were to announce Alpha 2 tomorrow, I'd be the first one to jump up and down and be like, finally. But <laughs> at the same time, we all want a qual quality product. And I think if they were to announce Alpha 2, let's say in the summer, and let's say it, it, it gets uh, launched with not even a quarter of the systems that were promised. Um, do you think the community would be like, upset by that or do you think it would like people wouldn't care because alpha 2 is out and it's gonna be persistent i'm mm -hmm. personally of the camp that uh they've already said on multiple occasions that uh not every feature is going to be ready at the beginning of alpha 2 right by the end of alpha 2 they're going to have everything in the game and tested absolutely 
like the core features every feature of the game is going to be tested whether it's perfected is a whole different story but they've at least got them all in they've 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 realized i guess i mean this is extrapolating but yeah, they've mm-hmm. got them all in. They've realized that one system isn't going to completely crash the other and break everything disastrously. They're all going to impact each other, obviously, because that's what code does. It all seeps in and intertangles with itself. But, right. um, And I think people who have been paying any attention really to any of those statements would kind of realize that it's okay if Alpha 2 starts without everything in there. And it might actually be a good thing, because then you know what that means? My ideal idea that I've gathered from reading all the posts and talking to people is that they're going to do Alpha 2 in kind of a phased testing. I hope so. They'll they'll start off Alpha 2 with like a certain number of classes available. And then uh, when they they allow secondary archetypes to be dropped in to create a class, it's going to be one or two of them to have a good variety of different hooks for skills. Mm -hmm. So they can test those different specific hooks and specific behaviors of, of skills. And then they'll move on and say, all right, we're done with those and remove those secondary archetypes out, drop in other secondary archetypes with those same hooks, but just different uh, different combinations with all the, the main primary archetypes. But then they're going to add more primary archetypes too because they're finishing those up and they're polishing those. And now there's not as much that can break with all the, the issues they found with, say, four classes and one or two secondary archetypes or one or two sorry four four archetypes as primary mm-hmm. and then one or two secondary archetypes they found a certain number of bugs squashed them fixed them looked at all the different hooks they work out well and now they can add more and different ones mm-hmm. and also with the game systems like you were saying there's a lot of systems that haven't been really unveiled like the naval system that that's just like it's all fairy tales storyboards and you know pointing off to the sunset like you see that out there yeah yeah i kind of <laughs> see it yeah that out there is what you're waiting for oh right okay got it <laughs> um but uh you know they could they could drop a system like that in for testing mm-hmm. for like two three weeks and then say all right and we're done here close that up drop a different system that we've seen barely anything about and we won't even notice the fact that naval stuff isn't there except for people who really wanted to test naval stuff they're gonna have to wait until they iron out all the bug reports and everything like that that they got during those three weeks right and, and but then there's other things for people to test right and and, and um Shibri, if you can see like how do you do you think the the overall community sentiment would be either positive or negative uh in regards to you know not all the systems being there and and just like vertex says they've said i think if, if i'm quoting steven correctly he said anywhere between 70 to 80 percent is what they're kind of going for but what if we only get like 20 percent like do you think that would still be okay to the player base or to the community i would say i feel like there would probably be mixed reactions um much right. like the last live stream those mixed reactions um very much but there's there's gonna be people that you know it, they would want and expect expect a certain amount done at the beginning and um i think as long as intrepid does their best with ashes to kind of set the precedence and what the expectation is um i think it'll help manage some of that like negative feelings kind of like how um Vaknar and um Roshan yeah and Maggie kind of helped with like setting expectations in general with the last live stream of it being like a dev interview and things like that and um y- you know hinting back like it, it it's the player base that hypes themselves up over getting an alpha 2 date when that was never promised kind of thing right and so i th- i feel like something similar might happen in a case like that with alpha 2 releasing maybe a little less than expected at, at first um that hype and that excitement for stuff to be there and you know people are gonna be sad because the thing that they wanted in there at the beginning is not that there at the beginning um so for example let's just say a uh, a full combination of primary secondary archetypes and there's a specific combo that somebody was looking forward to uh the likelihood of that being available at the beginning is less likely than a base set with a base secondary archetype option Mm -hmm. um so i feel like i feel like it that's where it kind of relies on us as content creators as well as uh ashes of creation to kind of help curb those and re-state or re um what's the word 
like reinvigor yeah pretty much and like remind them like this is this is what what's gonna happen like it's gonna get better and it's alpha 2's plan to be like upstanding instead of just one month um so right. when at updates happen like with alpha one it'll go down real quick the update will happen it'll come back up and um there'll be some new things to test no, hopefully <laughs> no absolutely and and again that information i remember of stevenson 70 80 percent that was something that was said years ago you know what i mean and again a lot has changed you know what i mean like yeah. they said that years ago that it wasn't going to be new world style gathering and now we have new world style style gathering you know what i mean and mm -hmm. there's been a number of changes after that they, they've gone from 103 nodes to 85 nodes um i'm guessing the, the the my major worry is and again i know there are certain creators that have gone over the financial aspect of it but steven isn't made of money you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It is very expensive to run an indie game studio to the caliber that they're trying to run it at, right? Most right. of the time for indie studios, like they're not really trying to hire too much because overhead is the most costly thing a studio can have. Like you know, onboarding people is very, very, very costly. And that's all they've been doing this year. I would say for 2022, they've probably seen the most onboarding they've had in any other year as far as developers mm -hmm. go. Um, and yet there are people that feel like kind of mixed. Like a lot of the, you know, other creators that I've talked to think, oh, we're only going to be in Alpha 2 for a year at most. And I don't know. Like I, and again, how much money can, Intrepid, how, does Intrepid have to even go two years? Because I think two years is probably more realistic. I mean, I would probably even say three years. But most people hearing this would probably be like, no, Vladis, you're an idiot. And I'm like, and I probably am. I'm definitely am an idiot. But I mean, it, to have no product, like, and only relying on the monthly cosmetics, which have also been getting kind of a little bit lambasted by people. There's been so many people I've I've heard, whether it's in the forums, on Twitter, it's like, oh, this is so mid, like, this isn't a good, you know, monthly cosmetic pack. You know, I've been enjoying them personally. Like, I... I like them a lot, but I just hear the sentiment of it not being great to buy. So that means less people are buying those, which means not much money is like coming in for, you know, people to, to get on the hype train. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess like Vertex, we'll start with you. Like how long do you think an alpha two can actually go for, you know? And then second question is, well, I don't want to bombard you. Let's answer that first. Like how long do you think alpha two would go for? <laughs> All right, all right. Well, um, I'm also going to keep in mind that I'm used to giving giving responses and talking like you know we have a two hour show or something, <laughs> you know. So I'll try I'll try and keep it uh, shorter this time because I realized that after last time I talked for a long time in there. It's probably no, it's, quick. It's totally fine. <laughs> Go right ahead. But um, yeah. So hmm. I think in in the financial realm, I think that uh, Stephen has a good bit of money that he's dumped in. They have a good bit of money coming in, but I think that they're being hampered by a few things. Like for one, people have a sour note in their mouth from the not knowing what certain cosmetics do, right. specifically on freeholds. And some people have a hard line stance where until they get that information, they're not buying any cosmetics right. at all. I've seen that. And so, I mean, there's that. Um, Jalan, uh, if you've seen, if you've watched some of Paradox stuff, he, he mm. continually has something prepped. Like I think he has a speech that he just clicks a button and it pops up like a seventh monitor, with the entire speech outlined <laughs> about um, how they're they're leaving money on the table because they're not allowing people to access certain cosmetics without buying into a paywall, and right. then buying up to a certain height of the paywall so that they can access everything at that height, right? And how more people would buy like little pieces here and there if they were allowed to. Right. Yeah. But uh, as far as the alpha and how long it should go as well, because I know that was in there too. Um, you know, I I don't see anything wrong with like a year, year and a half alpha if there's actual different testing to do. If they just had everything prepared to a certain degree and just dropped the entire game, like open to close, 100% of the, the quote unquote content is in there and they're fixing bugs and stuff and fixing systems that would lose flavor with a lot of people in like six months 
maybe a year at tops. They would just, the, the entire right. base would just be like, okay, and we're done here. But if you keep it fresh, I mean, people are excited about an Alpha 2 when they finish an Alpha 1. Right. Because there's going to be different things to test. It's going to be more things. So if they do that phase, that phase thing that I've gathered a lot of people talking about, and I think, I think with my opinion, if they do that, they could stick in Alpha for a long time because it's going to be different content on rotation and then coming back to it. And then that, that right there is going to be immediate sign of progress. Right. Hey, three months ago, when we were doing this testing, this was going on. Now they've dropped it back in and taken out the whatever testing. Right. And it's so much better. It's exactly what we wanted. It's exactly what people were saying. You know, they didn't get this done yet, but right. and there could be a whole other critiques and a whole other like excitement about that. Like a brand new rotation of excitement. Hmm. And what about you, Chibri? Do, do you think uh, Alpha 2 can go longer than a year? Or do you think a year is sufficient? Like, I'm just curious what your thoughts are. For me, it's kind of hard to say because I am aware that, you know, Steven and the Intrepid team have said that the Alpha 2 will eventually become like the PTR. So Alpha right. 2 specifically will be going ongoing. But um, as far as the phase of Alpha 2 specifically, um, I feel like that kind of depends on how fast they're able to get stuff out. I mean, we saw 5.1 right. recently update the foliage for them. <sighs> so um, good. So, yeah, so good. it looks really nice. Mm -hmm. And I just, I'm excited because, um, like, I think from, I believe from the dev discussion or the interviews, they were saying that 5.1 was a little easier to get to than 4 to 5. Right. So... I imagine a smaller patch like that would be a little easier to handle than a large redesign of systems that they're building from the back end. But um, I don't know. For me, I've, I've always had this, like, I guess, copium that there's probably stuff that they've still been working on that they're almost done with that we have not seen yet because it's not perfected right. in the way that Steven likes to be with his uh, it's not perfect, don't share it kind of <laughs> mentality. Um, right. I imagine there's a lot more that we'll see in 23. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know what? Yeah, go ahead. Not to interrupt on that, but to, to add to it, mm -hmm. just keep in mind that we have yet to see nodes three. <laughs> but you know, it doesn't exist. thousand <laughs> percent that they have more information they could share about nodes and create a nodes three. But it's literally been to the point where Steven says, we don't want anything to be outdated or whatever if we end up making changes, etc. So that could literally be the entire alpha two is in a quote-unquote maybe better state than people think end right quote yeah but it's not quite to the point where they think it's worth announcing a date even to so it, it very well could just be a, a nodes three situation there's definitely enough information to make a nodes three that's not going to change but it's not the information that they want to have ready for nodes three yeah. right and and i and i think the my whole thing is and i've talked to a number of people that I think piecemealing the Alpha 2 is the way to go. But piecemealing and having like three weeks to test just the naval, having, you know, a month to test the node progression, like going from tier one to two to three to four to five to six. Um, doing it that way elongates the entire process of Alpha 2. Um, mm -hmm. You have a progression cycle like New World, which New World did not piecemeal anything. They open up the entire game said test our game gave absolutely no direction no focus testing and look at the debacle that game went through because again when you unleash all the systems everybody just wants to play a new mmo mm -hmm. so the whole thing is that we're gamers first not testers and right. so how do you get people to test and not play you know what i mean because that's what they want right. the people want a new but mmo on their hands to go into so go ahead you give them a portion of a game to play. Okay. That's how you get them to focus on testing. You give them a portion of the game to play. And, and that's it. And I hope you're right. But do you think fatigue like will set in, like knowing that that is going to be that way for the next possibly like two years? Like if Alpha 2 goes for that long, because we also have to uh, consider that a system or a part of the game, what if people don't like it at all? Like, and again, like I, I've always said this, like we've always thought about the positive side of like, oh yeah, they're going to fix this little bug here, do this little thing there. And okay, it's, it's fixed. But what if the system that they show us is 100% fixed? There's absolutely no bugs, but players just don't like it at all. Like then what? If it's a pivotal system, 
like does intrepid just say well tough luck like deal with it or are we looking at a complete redesign of a system that they had absolutely no idea how to redesign this thing to get players to love you know what i mean like it's in those kinds of things that i'm trying to look at it more realistically right. like because again it's testing it's feedback right like we have to give our honest feedback and if there is something that feels too gamey or something that feels too grindy or it's just not fun at all like it's just something you do because you arbitrarily have to do it why you know what i mean and so these are, these are all the things that I kind of think of like when I'm lying in bed at night wondering and contemplating my whole life. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but it's just, you know, like I do worry about these things because I think they are legitimate concerns. And so I, I just feel like a year in the Alpha 2 is way too short because mm -hmm. technically New World had a year and that game is like a pretty basic MMO, like in the grand scheme of things compared to Ashes of Creation. Right. Um, yeah. and it took so long, even a year after its initial launch, it's finally starting to look somewhat like an MMO now. Like it actually has gotten a lot more done and reiterative and that's two years. You know what right. I mean? So imagine if new world with this current expansion that just launched, what if that was the live launch? That was the first ever impression that people had. I think again, like people that have stuck with new world, like where it is now, but there's a huge sentiment of players that experienced it early on when it first got launched and they don't even want to go back because you know just the the taste the first taste of new world is so bitter that they just would never want to go back that makes sense yeah i think we'll um sorry go ahead oh no you first i think um i think that depends on the person at the end of the day um Vertech and i have experience with testing video games as gamers not as necessarily testers so right. um i agree with what vertech was saying with like the um you only give them very specific things to test and they will test it kind of thing um mm -hmm. or like with the pvp during alpha one uh i believe steven had asked people not to pvp and then people kept <laughs> killing each other so they just turned off pvp for a bit right um so like i feel like in that way, um, because you're not setting setting up to be like an official tester, the idea is that like, yes, by purchasing an alpha one package, alpha two, et cetera, you will be a tester. Um, but I don't think they realize like the extent of what it means to be a tester because uh, Vertec and Absolutely. I had to go through like hours of like, okay, test this specific system. And uh, you can't talk to anybody else about your responses or your experiences. You have to privately share them. Right. And only at the end, the very, very end of all of the testing, can you share your experiences? Because otherwise you have a biased experience mm -hmm. um, in their eyes. So uh, it's going to be a lot more relaxed, I think, than that will be. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as fatigue, I, I, that really does come down to each person and what they expected out of it, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know, uh, we, uh, we both kind of during different games had a chance to go to uh like playstation hq and and test some games that were like six months to a year out from launch and then yeah it's the same thing like i got flat out told hey can you just play more of the story because we want to test more of the story stuff mm -hmm. like me personally because i was going through all the collections and like trying to collect all the things here and there and, mm -hmm. um so like they definitely direct people like this is what we need you to test like it's it's cool that that's working. We got people <laughs> testing that. We need you to test the story. Okay, right. okay, okay, okay. I'm going. I'm going. And, and that's but, again uh, when I was looking at New World, my fear was they went super wide, opening up the entire game, but they didn't dig deep enough into a single aspect, right? Because well, you know what the you know what the problem was there is that they, and maybe this is just me being uninformed, but I didn't know that game existed until like six months before they were like, all right, here you go. Here's a game. Yeah. So they they were creating the game this entire time. And it's it's what every game does, really. And mm -hmm. by every game, I mean, you know, the large majority of them out there. Right. Not in Obviously not literally every game. But right. so, most games out there, they, they, they keep it like under wraps. Like you don't even know they're making a game or they call it like Project Cheeto or something. Right. And and you can't even talk about it outside of like a little room and you get your memory wiped by the men in black and all that <laughs> stuff. Um 
but then when it comes time to to test it they're just like hey here's our game here's all the stuff and they didn't get any feedback from actual players they got they got qa people for sure testing bugs but they they may or may not give like player feedback and you don't always want to listen to all the player feedback but what you can glean from it and then gather from metrics inside the game can be combined into something that makes sense and you can realize oh they they're really not engaging with this feature hmm. or we always get complaints about the game having this issue right around the time they do this quest where they do this or they go there hmm. maybe they're just not enjoying that and they're not getting any feedback on that which is why they they launched the game into a uh, beta people came in and then they're like okay 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 we're just just kidding just kidding the game's not going to be like that at all right um and they flip-flopped on so many big, heavy core systems. And then like yeah. a month later, we're like, all right, here you go. Here you go, actually. While well, they're still putting super glue in the joints to make sure it doesn't fall apart. And wow. I think that was like a major problem with that, I think, because there's, that turned off a lot of people, right? Like you <laughs> said, people yeah. had tested it in the beginning and then they just flip-flop from there. So people probably just don't want to go back. Maybe because mm -hmm. they removed systems that those people were looking into or just didn't like the way that it was at the time. Maybe they might like it now, but right. um, it's it's hard because, you know, Steven is making a game that he wants to play. And so at, at some point, it's do, is there going to be some sort of um, common ground between what Steven wants to play and what the, uh, the wide variety of player base wants to play? And um, that's a great point. I think I think that's going to be something that you know we'll see coming up on how people react and everything. I I think that's a super great point. I've I've always said, um, how much of a stickler is Stephen going to be regarding his vision? Because, you know, there earlier this year, I remember the whole debate of Pv PVE servers and the mm -hmm. whole open world PvP was going to be terrible. Like, don't do it. You had the lucky ghost video go viral a little bit and you know make some traction or some waves in the ashes community and people were trying to explain the whole idea of ashes and there's just some people that don't get it because again it is very much unlike any mmo that is yeah. currently out there so it's really hard for a person to get a grasp on it because it's not like is it's not like a system of pvp that we're used to getting this is a right. very different form of pvp so I'm just curious, like outside of the PVP debate, because we, we can debate PVE or PVP, but just like other systems like naval, religion, caravans, like what happens when there is something that the players just don't find interesting or find fun? I'm really curious how Steven's going to handle that, because if it is a system that is very near and dear to him because of his fondness of Archage or Lineage 2, Mm -hmm. How much is he willing to bend for the betterment of the game and not just, well, I'm making a game that I like this system. And even if no one likes it, like I like it, you know what I mean? I just, I wonder what he's going to be able to bend on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I personally, or go ahead, Vertek. I was going to ask, like, what do you think? <laughs> you read my mind. I was, was going to say like, I, yeah, I, I personally think that um, he's probably going to find a balance like it seems like it with everything that uh, they've put out um, for core systems and core like pillars of the game, so to say, pillars of pillars of design. There's been a few things that they've been very firm on, and that's like the risk versus reward, the no pay to win, right? Um, you know, stuff like that. Like the MMO, you need to actually interact with the massively multiplayer online portion of the game to truly succeed. Right. right. You can play a game that doesn't have much risk versus reward you can just totally take the easy way on everything and just not really get very far you can not interact with people and you're gonna have a really slow going game about it but i mean it's possible mm -hmm. i suppose mm -hmm. but they're building it all around those core pillars and those core concepts and the core functionality but the other systems i think are where they're they're having some flex to it mm -hmm. with with this and that uh, here and there like um I forget what it was, but there was the one thing where he had made a statement about this is the thing we're going to do. People came back and he didn't necessarily totally change his view, but ended up saying, yeah, you know what? We'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and bend a little bit on that because it I was think just it was multi boxing. Yeah, like with the multi boxing thing. Um, I hate multi boxing, know, I, but that's just my own. I don't 
personal opinion. Yeah. I hate multiplexing. Yeah, I don't recall. I don't recall him having a, a strong opinion on that um, to like outlaw it. Mm. I think that was. Uh, I think that was kind of the same thing. As long as you're not doing it in a way that's buying power. Right. Like you can totally multi-box because it's going to take, as long as you're not playing this, both boxes on the same computer controlled by the same keyboard actions was the big thing about it. Right. Um, which, I mean, to me is acceptable. If you want to have two computers and you're going to have one hand on each keyboard trying to control two characters, more power to you. Um, mm -hmm. But good luck doing that with more than like two. Okay. <laughs> and and that at least is going to have you, you know, your your backup healer, your pocket healer is yourself. But you're not going to be right. doing 100 percent on either character. So yeah, well, the other way was way. Uh, are people like us, where we live in the same household. So if they banned multi-boxing and they're just looking at IPs, would they would that affect like me being like one room over in the same room as Vertech, being thought yeah. of as a different like a, a multi-box versus a different account kind of thing? But what happened with our family? We're going to have a whole hockey team of children and we all want to play at the same time, all right? We want to have 15 people playing in the same house. I mean, I mean, I think it's like when you can, you know, independently verify. I mean, that, that's, I guess that's one thing. But I guess like the spirit of multi-boxing, the fact that like you can just have like this programmer to like click onto a, a herb. Like in World of Warcraft, Druids oh, were... Body. Yeah, like the whole body and thing. Like it's just... Yeah. I, and again, yeah. I See, think with the... the the non-procedural uh, gatherables that I, th I hope Ashes continues to have is going to put a, a I think, a death nail into botting because the reason why botting exists is because there's very procedural gatherable spots that spawn in that spot eventually. So there's mm -hmm. basically a route that will mm -hmm. that you know bots can usually take to just go stand there, click. Oh, there's something to click. Move. You know what I mean? But in yeah, Ashes, yeah. if everything is truly random, which will put, that is going to take a lot of dev time just to even do that. I saw mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Jordan talk about, you know, uh, how gatherables in games, like especially in the old days, like, you know, there's like usually over two to 300 procedural spots they dictate on the map or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they try to be random about it, you know, with the AI stuff and everything like that. But eventually there is something that, you know, with respawn rates and everything like that, I, I think it's going to be hopefully to where bots aren't going to be able to do that. But right. um, anyway, uh, I don't want to talk about botting, but I'm just saying like there's there's like other things, too, that people, you know, have have went on about, too, about like add ons. Like, you know, mm -hmm. there's been this whole add on debate of, you know, should add ons be in Ashes of Creation? And, and I'm of the of the camp. Why not? Like at the end of the day, like I um I've been playing Dragonflight. I I heard you guys were playing Dragonflight too, which is awesome. Um, oh, go ahead. No, we've been playing classic. Oh no, yeah, not classic. classic yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, no, I'm yeah. just let's let's get classic. <laughs> yeah, Dude, our guild got us into it. Dude, we, we were like, I don't think so, and they're like, please, you're gonna love it, and I was like, All right. dude, there's so okay. many people playing Lich King. It is crazy. <laughs> like I saw on uh wow uh wow logs um mm -hmm. the parses that are happening right now just in like raiding mm -hmm. insane there is so many people playing wrath compared to dragonflight like it's crazy like it's, i think it, that shows you wrath was oh sorry yeah, no, wrath was like the best expansion as far as i'm concerned like to this day like there the, no don't get me wrong there were some features that have been added since then that i really enjoy right mm -hmm. But as far as actual expansion content and mm -hmm. raid design and such, like, right, they suckered basically the guild suckered me in with Old War, <laughs> is what it really comes down to. The guild suckered me in with Old War. I was just gonna there say, were so many different mm -hmm. diverse fights, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. I was Go just gonna say that, um, I think that's a prime example of when you change a game or a core part of the game and you see the players react naturally to that. Mm -hmm. um i've always heard you know as as far as cataclysm and then you know uh miss of pandoria etc uh pandaria um they ended up falling off really quickly and i think that the the way the systems changed along with those integrations may have had something to do with it um right and i mean playing classic reminds me of probably the way ashes is going to be with having to um you know, there's some sort of group binder, but it's not automatic. Um, it just shows you who else is looking to do whatever thing you need to do. More like a you locator, still... not yeah. really a finder, but it's like yeah. you're locating other people with the same interests. 
basically. right and so then you have to run all the way to wherever you're going to like play <clears throat> and there was even part of me times where i was waiting for vertex and someone was trying to invite me and i was like oh no thank you i appreciate that i'm, I'm waiting for somebody else um but you know it just it requires more communication than just pushing a button and then joining into a thing and there's been so many times where i've been confused because there's pre dungeon areas that i was not used to oh i'm sure so i was like are we in the dungeon yet no oh, oh okay okay <laughs> well <clears throat> so I, I i brought up dragonflight to mm -hmm. basically say you know there was a lot of things that they did to kind of put more into the game for mm -hmm. less add-on usage right you know what i mean and i think it was great like i actually ended up i only have like six add-ons now compared to like 20 that i used to have like not even exaggerating or joking um and there's more stuff that they're going to be including too but another game that i think does add-ons very fairly well is final fantasy 14 um mm -hmm. you know what i mean like the community there i would say is probably the one of the most positive mmo communities that we have out there and they have mm -hmm. damage meters you know what i mean like yeah. if, if you go to a guild where they casually raid and they say yeah we don't really do damage meters kind of thing like as long as you're not mentioning any damage meters or whatever you can have damage meters just you know we're, we're not high end at all we just clear bosses for story content and for people for for tokens or whatever the case is or you can right. join a guild that is very high end that requires dps meters because they're doing uh savage and ultimate raids and you know they're doing the highest content they can possibly do right it's your preference like i don't understand like this whole like well we're just gonna no add-ons at all like i don't know if maybe steven had a bad experience with add-ons or if he just sees the the add-on community as more of a of a hassle and like well we should be able to create those things in-house um i'm just really curious like did, i don't think we talked add-ons the last time that we spoke i'm just curious like what you were what you guys think about add-ons and if ashes were to have them like would you be okay with it would you be against it <clears throat> hmm. I, so... I feel like Ashes is doing their best to try to incorporate as much stuff as possible, but I'll let Vertex take over on this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of very opinionated on this uh, topic. Oh, um, okay. Let's see where where you where you lie. Where do so you lie? I think um, I don't know exactly all the all the leanings uh, as to why uh, Stephen and, and Intrepid made the decision like no add-ons. But uh, I know their public opinion is, you know, you don't need that kind of community. And once you have add-ons, then they start to, to the studio tunes fights that require the add-ons or else you don't perform enough to beat it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think the no add-ons uh, movement started from people who don't like to hear that they're bad at DPS. Or see. they're bad at healing. Like right. that's it. That's where the no add-ons, but then it gets rid of so many rich and really nicely productive add-ons as well. Mm -hmm. Even things like Atlas loot, something the game itself should come with. Every game should come with something like that. Even Absolutely. if it's, there's a caveat to it where the game's not listed in a gear index until somebody discovers it and brings the information of that back to town. And then it's cataloged and now everybody has access to that in game. Right. Like this is dropped once out of x amount of kills this has been dropped right mm -hmm. okay cool so now you can go through a catalog in the game of where gear was found how many times it was found stuff like that even like i said make it so that somebody has to discover it first right they don't know what bosses are in a dungeon until somebody finds a dungeon then oh wow there's a new dungeon what they yeah. oh, they, they <clears throat> fought this boss in there and that boss in there and then there's there's a little bit of a loot table on whatever happened to drop that week but something like that should totally be uh involved but instead everything gets axed because people don't like to hear that they need to improve and like you were saying if you don't want to hear you don't you, that, that you need to improve then go to the not top tier raid why do you feel that if you are truly performing badly you deserve a spot at the table of the top performing teams right not to say that in life they're better than you but in in the game they are performing at a higher tier than you so right. you don't quote unquote like deserve a spot with them you need to earn a spot with them mm -hmm. you need to to dedicate yourself to to get better like just that's all there is to it i mean i've had to face that wall myself i'm just not doing good with this right. i need to get better and the only reason i have that 
knowledge is because I have a tool that tells me. Right. Yeah. That being said, a proper raid leader is going to look at more than just raw numbers. Like, what does this person bring to the table? <laughs> this person right. brings raid awareness. They're calling out stuff for the raid leaders. They are bringing uh, extra materials to the raid to supply people with potions and buffs and stuff. You know what? They're bringing the fact that they have never once missed an interrupt in their entire gaming career. Like, they always hit that interrupt every time it needs to be hit. Like, a good raid leader, raid leader looks at that. So, you know what? Right. If you bump into a raid where they don't look at the total person, they look at just a meter and that's it, but your job requires you to be more than just the meter, then you probably don't want to be a part of that team anyway. So, you know what that damage meter did for you? It highlighted someone you do not want to raid with. Go to the next team. The end. That's all there is. So, I'm guessing you're in the camp of no add-ons. Me? I'm, oh, in the camp. No. <laughs> I'm, just I'm, I'm in the camp of not one add-on ever, ever. No, no. So I, I'm literally, I mean, echoing your same sentiment. I completely agree with you. And I, I, I don't like this. Well, I want to belong to the high-end raid team, but I want them to adhere to my rules. I just think that's not fair. Like right. you go to the group that you jive with. And if you're a super casual, like if you're a dad, you're 38, you have three kids you only have time to game for like an hour and a half at most uh you don't have time to dedicate to like a super like you know high-end like rating schedule or a, a sieging schedule is probably going to be more realistic for ashes um right. killing world boss and stuff like that like you go somewhere where it's like hey we're other 38 year old dads and moms and stuff like that that are you know in your boat and we're just super casual about it and that's what it is like i i don't think that <clears throat> A very hardcore person that's like let's say like you know super high end super efficient at ro rotations and dps should go to a, a, a guild like that and start mm -hmm. making them adhere to their mythic rules and or their um high-end mindset you know a person shouldn't do that just like how a person who doesn't go at a high-end level should go to the guild that's super high-end and then having them inform to a very casual level it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Oh, and let me let me take this time real quick, if you don't mind. I'd like to plug somebody on on the statement that you made right there. Okay, but, uh, go, go right if ahead. You're, if you're a family person, if you're an old dad or whatever, um, you should try to find an old dad's guild. Well, there literally is a guild named Old Timers Guild, and there is like that they they are the family people. They are the hey, we understand you got kids. Just go take care of your kids. We got it. And they do, they do some awesome. hardcore raiding, they do some chill raiding, they do whatever. If you have a family and you think that you have no time to raid or whatever, or you're having a difficult time finding a, a crew that understands, look, look, look them up. Look them up. And they're in the Ashes Pretty community? Good. From, what I understand, from what I understand, they're, they're planning on jumping into Ashes. And they, they have people keeping an eye on it and everything. Um, I bumped wow. into them during SOTOR. And That's almost awesome. jumped in there myself, except I was in another guild at the start of the game. And, and we... When I quit the game, I obviously didn't need a guild anymore. So <laughs> right, no, that's that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, and, they were they were friends of ours. Yeah, and and I know there's people like that, and I've always thought like we could be just like the Final Fantasy community. I mean, so far I would say the Ashes community is probably not as toxic as other communities are. Like if you were to go look at like you know <clears throat> World of Warcraft, or I mean, I would say WoW is probably as the least toxic compared to what it used to be. But it's yeah. still yeah. talk. It's still toxic. I mean, there's still it's, got, it's gotten less. It's gotten less, but I mean, it's still you know what it is. But <clears throat> why can't we be like another Final Fantasy community, where yes, there's add-ons, but if you just go whatever group or whatever guild adheres to the rules that you like, like you know what I mean? Like yeah. why should you be have the how dare you mentality for another guild that's having fun in their own way? Like you have fun your way, let them have fun their way. Because if you don't want find your people, yeah, find your people. Like, and if find you them. don't like add-ons at all, then go to a guild that doesn't run add-ons or doesn't yeah. care if you do or don't. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That way, you're not going to be singled out. You're not going to be, you know, um, well, that's really it. I mean, it's it's really just people afraid of being singled out because they they're not as good a gamer as they used to be, or maybe they are just they were never a good gamer and they just don't want to be exposed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Either way, it doesn't mean that they yeah. shouldn't have fun in the game they're playing. You know what I mean? It's so, There's a guild out there for everyone and a raid group absolutely. out there for everyone. Like, literally, the guild that I was running in uh, WoW back during Lich King era, um, we had one raid group, which, by the way, was run by somebody that was not me. <laughs> they were the raid leader. I was actually right. even the second tier tank. 
I wasn't right. even the best tank. Um, I was an assistant raid lead for that specific raid group because it was a hardcore raid group. You needed these add-ons because we needed to perform flawlessly. We were working at the bleeding edge. As soon as something was released, we were in there and we were right. planting our face in its boot just to see how we would die so we can record how that death happens. Right. So somebody else can avoid it. Um, but then we also had another raid group that I was the raid leader for that, that had zero requirements for anything. Feel free to bring an add-on if you want, but no add-ons whatsoever required. You're not required to be of any skill level. Right. Just don't kill everybody. That's all you gotta do is be not terrible. Right. <laughs> That's it. If you're terrible, we'll, we'll talk. We'll walk through some stuff. We'll see if we can help you work on things but and, it's going to be slower and I'll, and I'll just say this like even with Final Fantasy's community like there are bannable add-ons that if you are caught with these add-ons like you're banned and I and I do think that Steven could have the same kind of policy you know what I mean like I don't want a deadly boss mod let me be very clear and if you're a wow person you know what that is but if you don't know what that is it's basically an add-on that when there is like a world boss or a raid boss or a dungeon boss that is doing this mechanics Deadly boss mods is an add-on that basically shouts out the mechanics before they happen. Like, move out of the fire, or, you know, a uh, boss is about to cast a, a thing in three seconds, or whatever. Like, there's it's just like a countdown thing to kind of already preempt you into what's happening. Um, I don't like those kinds, kinds of add-ons, personally. And I think the, 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 there's only one add-on I really care to have, and that's a DPS meter. Because I am a very competitive, damaging person. And I just want to know, am I doing more or less damage? If I'm experimenting with my talent builds or abilities or I'm switching something up, I just want to know, am I doing better? Am I doing worse? Like, that's it. Like, I don't care to know if anybody else's DPS. It could be a damage meter just solely for me. I don't need to see other people. But I do agree with you, uh, Vertek, when it comes to guild leaders. Like, if you are having a barrier and there is not there is no add-on to tell you, like, well, who a part of my raid team isn't performing like how can you tell so now people are just banging their heads against the wall because there's maybe a couple of people or a lot of people that aren't performing as well because you have absolutely no idea and how, right. like that and, to me that would be very frustrating because we would have no you know tools what? as to who or how to figure this out but it's you know also... what there is oh sorry you go first because i I have a whole other spiel. <laughs> Go ahead. It's also really frustrating for the hardcore people because oh, absolutely. Um, I do use uh, DPS meters for WoW, but I use mm -hmm. it to compare my DPS to other people or my healing to other people. Right. And I try to figure out who's doing better than me and I look at their gear and I, I, if I can't figure out like if my gear is maybe on par with theirs or like maybe even better, but I'm still underperforming compared to them, then I'll begin looking at like, okay, well, Maybe it's a skill set that I'm using or like you said, the talents and stuff like that. Right. And so for hardcore players, I think it's kind of important to be able to have something like that because mm -hmm. we all we always want to optimize, you know, what we're doing. And especially in a game like Ashes of Creation where there's not going to be PvP gear versus PvE gear, it's just mm -hmm. going to be all the same type of gear. I think that's going to help a lot of the issues that WoW has where WoW seems to kind of prioritize PvP over PvE gear meaning that somebody who has PvP gear is going to easily kill even the top level PvE person. And right. um, I feel like a little bit like that's almost unfair in my manner. Like in my mind, they should be like similar, mm -hmm. but um, that is like a whole other topic. But I think having that DPS meter or something to tell how much damage you're doing is important in that progression for the people that are into hardcore stuff like that because like right. we, we are gonna have that like it, it's more fun to be able to optimize because for some of us that's that's the game that we're playing we're playing an, a more optimized how much damage can i do out how much healing can i do out um and that's useful for pushing harder content and i'll, I'll say this we'll let you go vertex after this is just they could create world bosses where there is absolutely zero dps checks everything is mechanical based so as long right. as you move out of the mm -hmm. fire or move out of this mechanic or interrupt this ability, you'll kill the boss as long as people keep damage their whatever rotation of rota uh, damage they do. Yeah. I, yeah. I just feel like that's in the day and age we live in with like high end, like that's going to get very boring. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I could be wrong. I, I, I think there could be very interesting mechanics they can do. 
that don't require DPS checks. I'm not saying that DPS checks make the game more fun or make bosses more fun, but you know, at the end of the day, like I think just knowing what damage or how your healing is, or even your damage mitigation as a tank, that's not breaking the game. That's not having a competitive advantage. I mean, it's, it's just knowing where you're sitting currently and like, oh, I used to sit at this particular damage threshold. Now I sit here. You know what I mean? That's yeah. really all mm -hmm. it is. I'll uh, go ahead, protect. So, um, well, just to key off what you said, how um, how would you feel to ask you a question? How would you feel oh. about a world boss that, um, let's say, uh, did... I'm not going to say the game. No, forget it. The game's like seven years old now or something. I'm going to go ahead and spoil the story. Whatever. Okay. Final Fantasy 15. Okay. Um, I forget the name of it. The giant, the giant thing that you can fight as an optional boss at the end. It's actually like a mountain. Um, Adamantoys, I think it was. I haven't um, played 15, so I, I don't know that boss. Okay, well, this is a giant boss. It's literally, okay. it's a mountain. And through the game, the some of the characters will be like, that that mountain has a funny shape to it. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Or, hey, we should check that mountain out sometime. It's got, that cliff right. looks really familiar. Right. But it turns out it's like a giant turtle. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah, and you got you to destroy it. But it's seriously, it's, I think, a two-hour fight. Like a two-hour oh fight in a single-player game. God. Now, yeah. how would you feel about a world boss that, as long as people keep damaging it and you stay out of the fire, etc., it'll die, but it's going to be a 24-hour battle. With, uh, like, 200 people attacking it at once, it's going to be a 24-hour battle, and people get squashed and almost insta-killed. So... The only way that I'd be okay with it, and again, I know people might get upset. If it was once a year, I wouldn't mind. It has to be super limited into the, that kind of event. It To me, that sounds like an event boss. Like right. something yeah. huge that's going to happen. See, I'm thinking almost like World of Warcraft Cataclysm level. Right. Like it's almost like wandering the world and like destroying, literally destroying metropolises on its own right because it's just stomping through doing as it pleases just slaying people as it goes and just right almost creating a server reset it's going to stomp from castle to castle metropolis to metropolis taking as long as it needs to to go through all these areas unless people kill it but it t it's going to be a 24-hour slay and wow. in that entire time it's procedurally generating like which nodes and which which whatever's have impacted the world the most and it goes for those directly first see that would that would be very risk reward um yeah but if if it were only once that you had to do that for like a year and it really depends on like patch cycles like why is that happening like is if it just happened out of nowhere with no warning i think that would be kind of trash in my opinion um yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would it would have it would have to be something that is leads up to something in that kind of a nature um and it could be just like the yeah. gates of encourage or you know something you will etch that into your memory and remember that 20 years later because yeah. it, you Forever. were you you were you were there for that you saw that go down you saw the changes that happened to your server because of that one singular event um it has to be big and it has to be something that isn't really repeatable it was like hey like you're there for this this is going down prepare yourself kind of thing mm -hmm. um i think that would be awesome like i i think more games should do something to that effect um but i don't want something like that to be gamey to where there's like something like that that happens like four times a year or even more than that like i think once maybe you get really old that'd yeah. be the point where people oh, are like yeah. i i know where i'm planning my vacation <laughs> right like it, it, it has to be something <laughs> like like a server wide that would like you do it once and then like you accomplished it or didn't accomplish it or depending on what happens uh what kind of destruction mm -hmm. it lays and then how do drops work and just all these different kinds of things like what kind of damage does the boss do like how, can you even tank it or is it just like a a fester gut kind of fight where you just go and just dps it like non-stop for however long it needs to be mm -hmm. um i mean i i think it'd be interesting um but when it comes to ashes the one thing that i've i've also heard people say is the rating scene you know, we, we hear uh, Intrepid talk about um, there really isn't going to be uh, much instance content. Everything's going to be open world. Um, and while a lot of people are really happy about that, there's a lot of people that aren't so happy about that. 
So uh, I'm just really curious as to where y'all stand when it comes. I mean, you guys have been raiding in Yuldar and in Wrath of the Lich King. I've been raiding in Dragonflight. Um, people raid in Guild Wars 2 in Final Fantasy 14. Do you think Ashes is just going to be a game where raiding is just not on the table? Like it's going to, there's just going to be something completely different about this game. I feel like raiding is going to be very different with Ashes. Um, yeah. Almost non-comparably different. Right. Um, meaning that it's going to be very, very hard to compare it to another system. Um, maybe there'll be parts that are comparable to other systems, multiple systems, but um, I don't know. I, I Honestly, there's also where there's a will, there's a way. And um, I mean, at the end of the day, with the corruption system and everything, um, I feel like it'll be very different from server to server on how that looks. Um, I imagine... Uh, just like playing in a PvP server on World of Warcraft, not every alliance character automatically kills you on site, but um, some of them, they just, they either help you if they can, or they just leave you alone and go about their business. Um, and I feel with a factionless game like Ashes, it'll be quite similar, um, but there'll also be a lot less ganking happening um, in terms of just meaningless ganking. But I mean, I know that with the open world systems, that makes it, an interesting perspective for people who maybe are pvx and don't mind pvp with their pve mm -hmm. and i kind of have a feeling that you're going to want some pvp players to join in uh join in on the raid to help protect your more pve players or right. um, have a more pvx oriented guild um to be able to handle doing both because the smart tactic would be kind of rude but you know take out your opponent while they're fighting the big bad and distracted right. you know and uh their numbers are getting split because some of them are focusing on trying to take down the boss and the others are focusing on trying to survive um and then there's the depending on how often that thing respawns if it does respawn because um, we don't really know that much about ashes um the polite thing of like letting them like they were there first letting them take care of it or like trying to help in some manner i don't know it's it's going to be one of those things where I, I really do think it'll vary from server to server right and i i do want to mention because it's probably like the last question we're probably going to go through is basically like with raiding and how it currently exists in a lot of games um killing one world boss i know there's gonna be multiple world bosses like you know i i hope in if i had my way depending on how i mean for how big ashes of creations world's going to be I would hope for 30 plus world bosses. Um, but I, I think that's a little much to ask for. You know what I mean? Like if we were to take classic wow, uh, and the entirety of classic wow from like start to finish, um, there was probably like over, I would say 30 plus world boss, I mean, well, bosses in raid. Right. So I'm just really curious as to like how the open world dynamics is going to be, what the weak to weak gameplay is going to be for a person who just likes pve content um you know what i mean like what are we going to be doing like how are we going to be doing it because we're not going to castle siege every week right that's the i mean that's from what they said that that's going to be more of a of a lead up and it's you know what i mean it's not you're not going to be doing that like as your right. weekly kind of pve content so right. do you think just killing a singular world boss like over and over is going to be sufficient for that crowd Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I see and this is the part where I'm kind of warring with my own opinion on it because I think that rating in general as Chibi said is going to be vastly different from server to server there's going to be some servers where there's going to be one guild that is so driven it is going to dominate the entire server and it's going to be the first one to do everything and it's going to be the only one to do everything for a certain number of certain amount of time or at least because they're going to dominate the the guild castles they're going to dominate the pvp raids because they're just going to they're going to come up in force and they're going to just take it right and that's it and apparently from what i've gathered i haven't really dug through all the info that they've released and, and actually spoken about but someone was mentioning that uh the bosses are going to respawn on a timer that's like not like once a week they respawn but like after x amount of time they're going to respawn and whenever we know that timer they're going to be there and waiting and they're going to take it down again they're going to do the entire raid again 
and they're probably going to have like their PvP centric folks sitting outside, just guarding the gates to the to the entire place, whatever. That's going to be some servers. Other servers, people are going to be somewhat a little bit nicer, but they're still going to cause massive divides between groups because they're going to be like, no, we're here. We're doing this. Right. Go away. Come back next time. And it's it's going to create an incredibly complex soup <laughs> of <laughs> WTF is going on, I think, between all the different dungeons and raids that are available. And people say there's going to be so much else to do, yada, yada. But PvE people like that are all about raiding, that's what they do. Yep. They raid until they can't raid any longer, and then they wait for the next week for the refresh, and then they raid until they can't raid any longer. Right. Yeah. They well, don't like, well, okay, well... Sprinkling in other things in between that time, but I just feel like for Ashes... Basically to prepare for the raid, though, yeah. No, absolutely. And, and so when you don't have a raid to do, what are you primarily doing in Ashes of Creation strictly as a pve -er? Like, that's my fear, is like, okay, there's going to be open-world dungeons. Well, is that where the gear is, then? Like, are we just going to be spelunking into dungeons, uh, going deeper and further to kill every boss there, and that's our endgame kind of progression? Like, I'm just curious, like, and I, and I, and I, I hope once we get into Alpha 2, we really see what an end game picture of Ashes of Creation will start to look like, because I, I do hope, and I do think that there's going to be a lot of systems to interact with, but how much of those systems are going to be meaningful to the strictly PVE kind of player, you know what I mean? Like yeah. PvP wise, like the PvPers are gonna have a freaking paradise in Ashes of Creation. Yeah. There's every system is a PvP system to some degree. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm just really curious as to how the the you know because majority of people do PVE. You know what I mean? Like right. I mean I'm not trying to talk up lowly about the PvP crowd, but the majority of uh, MMO gamers are PVE players. So I, I really want there to be a plethora of things, uh, weekly activities that you can do. Um, that people can actually do um, like every week to just kind of keep their times going. It, it keeps them uh, logged in and it keeps those other things too, where it's like, oh, there's a siege happening like uh, next week. Like we got to prepare for that. Like screw the raid. We're doing this now. Like that's going to be awesome. And it's going to, it's going to be, I think a very healthy reprieve and like in a healthy mental mind reset uh, for doing a siege compared to doing just the standard raiding. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. And say, I want to take your your fear. I want to turn it into anxiety. All right. <laughs> okay. So your fear is that there's not going to be enough for the PVE people to do when they're not raiding. Right. Now I want to take it and turn it into anxiety by saying, what if there's only, let's say, there's five raids active at any given time, but potentially active because of the you know five different metropolises have unlocked a raid. Right? right. Right. Now let's say there's a guild that's out there dominating it, and they take all five. Now there's literally not a raid to do. What do all those PVE people that do nothing but raid and prepare to raid do if there is no raid to do? Pray for a PVE because server. Because there's a couple <laughs> guilds that dominate all of it. And now these PVE people are preparing for a raid that never happens. Yeah. Right. No, it, it's, it's Four a months great... go by and they never raid because they can never get in there. It's a great question. I mean, and again, like, um, PVPers will be gatekeepers when they can be. And I think for the dungeons, for all the open world stuff, you're going to have guilds that are just going to plant themselves outside the entrance. And nope, only our guild comes in here. We kill on site. You know what I mean? If you don't think that's not going to be an Ashes of Creation, you have another thing coming. Um, and again, that's just kind of like my whole, I wouldn't say fear, but it's just, I just want to know like how Intrepid is going to handle these kinds of things. Like, are they just going to let that play out? Um, what are they going to do? Who knows? Yeah. Now, here you go. Here's yeah, another thought for you. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. We're saying. So here's another thought for you. Here's some more anxiety inducing stuff. So um, about the add on thing, because um, earlier I didn't give my response. I kind of spun it off to the side. But here's kind of oh. a closing thought for you, since uh, okay. I think you're trying to wrap up here soon. Oh, yeah, right. But um, so what happens when people still want to gatekeep their raids, right? Mm -hmm. There's no add ons to do it. Right. Like Discord exists. Discord mm -hmm. has made streaming and sharing your screen incredibly easy, especially Absolutely. to a illustrious guild that has a level two or three tier, right? So you mm -hmm. can just share great quality video. All right, there's no add-on. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our uh, hunter expert. 
they're going to watch you as you stream your hunter gameplay uh across these specific ads what we want you to do is go to this location attack that thing kill it as fast as you can okay cool now that you have your little pet thing and all that go over here and take that one on with just your pet go okay now let's go over here and do that and that is their check instead of just a gear parse or a gear score or a achievement link or right. something like that that an add-on could have done instantly now they have to go through a whole song and dance and now they're still going to be upset because they can't get in right no it's they're all valid concerns i mean that's it's why i don't envy intrepid right now to be a a a, a, a developer and to deal with all these questions because they are going to come up eventually like again right, right now uh, as a content creator we're chomping at the bit for new information to talk about when the mm -hmm. game when alpha 2 actually launches you don't think there's going to be a content creator that's going to cover every single aspect of some problem or yeah. some community concern you bet your butt they are and yeah. so mm -hmm. that's kind of like where i'm sitting right now is just seeing where where are we going to sit when it comes to end game what's the weekly game loop going to be is there even going to be one how much um gate gatekeeping is there going to be for uh that kind of content um will be will some servers be able to coexist who knows but mm -hmm. um is there any kind of closing thoughts you want to say chibri before we we get off i think that the alpha 2 has a lot in store for us and a lot of questions that we have waiting in our minds that may or may not be answered in the coming year 100 percent agree uh vertech chibri thank you so much for coming on and having this conversation with me finally it's it feels like it's been so long but <laughs> new year right, right you know like it's i'm so grateful that um you know you guys were able to come on and and just have this conversation i had an absolute blast it, again like i said we've been talking for an hour and 16 minutes and it feels like 15 maybe 10 so that's I'm, right by i'm yeah. a wizard yeah. I, I i'm a time wizard when you come to one of your <laughs> podcasts i can just zip zap you an hour and ahead into time but uh thank there you guys you so much for coming on i really appreciate you guys and if you haven't checked out the golden feather on twitch uh or on their youtube channel you you need to go support these people i'll leave a link in the description below where you can go see them on twitch and on you know youtube uh when do y'all stream on twitch if y'all can give a little oh actually that's a thing that we're doing different this year oh, okay. um we normally stream our podcast on fridays okay but we're adding a few different things including um me doing saturday morning mmo time um called coffee quest and it's just where i wake up and i drink coffee and i try to do some quests while i wake up mm -hmm. <laughs> and then sundays we're doing D D, and then um monday nights we are having uh vertex hosting it mainly uh chatting about ashes or any other just casual tavern talks sweet yeah. so on the so fridays 7 p.m eastern mm -hmm. for the for the podcast <laughs> um i think you're aiming for what 10 or 11 a.m on saturdays yeah eastern also. Like that. Mm -hmm. cool well, and then I'm... sundays are going to be kind of mid-afternoon and yeah. mondays are going to be 7 or 8 p.m depending on when i can get out of work <laughs> aka clear the tavern um <laughs> And this is going to be a free form chat with with viewers and whatnot like no real podcast to it no structure no topics specifically maybe just random things about life that can tie into ashes some inspirational things and whatnot just right mm -hmm. well i'm going to leave all that in the description below and i'll get with cheaper to give me all the specific times and stuff like that so that way people know uh golden feather ladies and gentlemen it was awesome episode i really enjoyed this and if you like this episode of the 1v1 podcast hit that like button it helps it pump out to the youtube algorithm for more and more ashes pill people uh to listen to the podcast and um i'm your host vladis with vladis gaming this is the golden feather and we will see you guys on the next one have a great day cheers bye